It's time for Seen and Unseen, where we unpack the stories behind the headlines. And for that, we turn to Fox News contributor Raymond Arroyo. All right, Raymond, while the media is focusing, they're going crazy on this January 6th extravaganza, and also, of course, Ukraine, there is a huge story we're missing. Yes, Laura, and it's in our backyard, and it has dangerous consequences. Biden is in L.A. for the Summit of the Americas. Now, having read and talked to a lot of people about this agenda for the summit and the invitees, I thought to myself, before the president had even taken off, he's already stumbled, and then he did. That's the president boarding Air Force One this morning. The problem is the stumbles are continuing. This summit was convened to address climate change and migration. The only leaders of the countries with the most migrants, Guatemala, Honduras, and El Salvador, are not coming. Neither is Mexico. Obrador is boycotting because Biden did not invite those Latin leaders that he considers dictators. We look forward to hosting Foreign uh, Secretary Ebrard as the Mexican represent representative. And at the end of the day, to your question, we just don't believe dictators should be invited. And that's and so we don't regret that. And we will stand. The president will stand by his principle. OK, so let me get this straight, Laura. We don't meet with dictators, but the president's about to make a trip to Saudi Arabia to meet with the sultan in a few weeks. And he's trying to hatch an Iran nuclear deal. Well, I, I, add to this. We won't meet with dictators. We're enriching dictators with everything we're doing with China. And now Venezuela gets to sell oil to the EU. Right. I mean, and then we're, we're, we're reengaging with Iran. And then we're going to get Saudi Arabia to, you know, make more money over there on oil because we're not going to drill for it. What do you mean they're not? Oh, they bend over backwards to dictators, maybe except Putin. Mm. That's about it. Mm. All right. And even Richard Haas at the uh, Council on Foreign Relations, he tweeted that the Summit of Americas looks to be a debacle. The U.S. has no trade proposal, no immigration policy, no infrastructure package. Instead, the focus is on who will and who will not be there. Yeah, wow. well, I, I think you and Richard Haas are being a little negative, Laura. I know major countries are scattering. They're not paying attention to the United States. But Vice President Kamala Harris, the U.S. border czar, is on the job, Laura. She just announced $1.9 billion in private investments in Latin America. It is about doing what we know is possible to maximize the capacity of the people in that region, um, doing it in a way that really understands the power of ecosystems, of, of considering the issues holistically. We together have generated more than $3.2 billion of investment in the region. And you applaud because we all know that it's a substantial sum. Only what she calls that donation of investment, it does nothing to stem the caravan headed this way, Laura, nor does it address the biggest national security threat we face. Talk about an unseen story. Reuters did a trade analysis of the last six years or so. Putting Mexico aside, guess who has surpassed the United States in trade with Latin America? You said it earlier. China is now the leading trade partner with Latin America, spending $247 billion to the U.S.'s $174 billion. This week is not helping. Well, of course it's not going to help. It's not going to do anything to stop the migration. They know it. But they're happy to, you know, help other countries get richer as we get poorer. So I hope all these countries do better in our own hemisphere, but not going to do anything. And I'm, I'm just still stuck on that pronunciation of Obrador. I know you did the Spanish accent, Raymond, Obrador. Right. But the press secretary seemed to have well, an interesting evolution in the way Berlitz she... could help. Yes. Well, and how is, uh, how is the January 6th uh, stuff affecting this summit, if at yeah. all? You know, there was a Mexican ambassador who was interviewed, and he said this is causing an instability in the hemisphere because the, the, the Latin American countries look at this and they say, look, the United States can't handle democracy all that well. Why should we take leads from them? So this dramatization has heavy consequences, and I think people don't recognize mm -hmm. that, you know, while they're making their political points. But Kamala Harris did do her own diplomatic outreach to an Asian country last week, Laura. She met with South Korean boy band, BTS. Nice to meet you. Very nice to meet oh, you. How are you? Very good. When we see hate and prejudice, it's meant to make people afraid. 
And it's meant to make people feel alone and therefore without power. Wow. Woohoo. I have to tell my mom. <laughs> Laura, it's a lot easier to deal with BTS than, than deal with that border crisis, and you don't even have to give them perpetual feeding and housing, so it's pretty good. Mm, BTS. Um, I was going to use another acronym to follow that, but I better not. No, it leave would be it very immature for me. All right, Raymond, thank you. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.